Welcome to Jeremy's IT Lab. This is a complete course for the CCNP NCORE, Enterprise Core, exam. In this video, we will go over the process of downloading and installing CML, Cisco Modeling Labs, the platform we will be using for labs in this course. Getting CML up and running is a bit more complicated compared to installing something like Packet Tracer, so I decided to make this video walking you through the process. Now, all of the information in this video regarding setting up CML comes from the CML installation guide, which is available on developer.cisco.com. It's also easy to find with a quick Google search. I highly recommend referring to this guide when setting up CML on your computer. It will tell you all you need to know. However, I also know it can be nice to have a video walkthrough, so that's what this video will be. Just keep in mind that I can't cover every single detail in this video so refer to the guide when you have any issues. First, let's look at the System Requirements page of the guide. Let's check out the resources you need to run CML. CML has a minimum memory requirement of 8 GB and 4 physical CPU cores. Keep in mind these are minimum requirements. With these resources, you won't be able to run very large labs. However, I will try to keep the labs in the course as small as possible, so they can be run with the minimum hardware requirements. Now, before we get into the rest of the video, I should mention that virtualization features such as VTX on Intel processors or AMD V on AMD processors must be enabled. Usually they are enabled by default. My PC has an Intel processor and it was enabled by default. But just in case, you should make sure they are enabled on your PC. To enable these features, you must access your computer's BIOS. Exactly how you do that varies depending on the maker. But for my PC, I have to shut it down, power it back on, and repeatedly press the escape key until I reach the BIOS screen, which I'm showing in this video. Since Windows isn't booted, I can't do a screen capture, so I just used my iPhone to record my monitor. As I said before, virtualization features, called Intel Virtualization Tech and Intel VTD Tech, are enabled by default on my PC, so I didn't need to change anything. Because the way to access the BIOS differs depending on the maker of the PC, I recommend doing a Google search for how to access the BIOS of your particular PC model. So let's move on. Let's look at how to purchase CML. If you do a Google search for Cisco CML, you'll find this page. Scroll down a bit, and here are the options for single users. There are two options, Personal and Personal Plus. I mentioned this in the course intro video, but the only difference is that Personal allows up to 20 nodes in a lab, and Personal Plus allows up to 40. I recommend Personal. It's cheaper, and we won't be doing any labs with more than 20 devices in this course. Personal is what I use for my own labs, by the way. I don't have a Personal Plus license. So click on Buy Now. That will take you to the Cisco Learning Network store, where you can add CML to your cart like this, and then check out. I already have CML, so I won't go any further than this. But I don't think I need to show you how to purchase. Note that this is a one-year license. It says here, access duration, 365 days. I think CML is an essential tool for most network engineers, so I personally have no problem paying this amount per year, but if $199 a year feels too expensive for you, let that motivate you to study for and pass your CCNP exams within a year. After purchasing CML, there are a couple files you need to download. The easiest way to access those files is, here from the Learning Network Store, click on your name in the top right and access My Account. Here is my order for CML, and here you can click on Download, and it will take you to the software downloads. There are four files here. You need two of them. The top one is for bare metal deployment. If you're installing CML directly on a server, you use this file but I assume most of you are running an operating system like Windows and will use a Type 2 hypervisor to run CML within it, as I am doing. For that, you need the second one here. It says, 
This image is for deployment on VMware, and it's a .ova file. I already have the file downloaded, so I won't download it again, but make sure you download this OVA file. The second file you need is at the bottom, the CML Reference Platform ISO file. It's nearly 8 gigs, so it may take a while to download. I already have this file too, so I won't download it now, but make sure you get it. Okay, now you have the necessary CML files downloaded. Let's move on to the next step. The next step is to download your VMware hypervisor. This here, VMware Workstation Player, is free. I use VMware Workstation Pro, which is not free, but it's basically the same thing. Anyway, just click on Download for Free, click on Go to Downloads here, and then Download Now. Note that there are versions for Windows and Linux. If you are using Mac, you should look into VMware Fusion instead. Anyway, the installation of VMware is the same as any other program, and I already have it installed, so I won't show that process here. So, after installing VMware, it will look something like this. I already have my CML VM set up, but I'll create a new VM to demonstrate the process. Let's look at the CML installation guide to see what to do here. Go to the Installing CML section, and then click on the Installing CML as a VM link. Next, click on the Deploying the OVA file on VMware Workstation link. Okay, here are the steps. First is to find the local CML OVA file. I already have the folder open. Here is the folder with the OVA file and the ISO file we need. Note that the ISO file I downloaded was in a zip file, and I have unzipped it here. Make sure you do that too. Anyway, now let's import the OVA file into VMware. So, I'll just double click the OVA file, and it opens automatically in VMware. Here, I will rename the virtual machine to CML underscore demo, since I already have a VM with this name. Now I can just click on import. This may take 30 seconds or so, so I'll skip the video ahead. Okay, the OVA file has been imported, and this is the new VM. We can turn it on with this button here, but don't do that yet. Let's return to the CML docs. It says right here in this red box, do not start the virtual machine. After you have imported the OVA to VMware, you must configure the VM settings before you start it, so let's do that. Now down here, they list some settings you need. You can take your time to read through these for details, but let me show you in VMware. So back in VMware, click on Edit Virtual Machine Settings under the Power On button I showed you earlier. The first setting here is the memory. The exact amount of memory you use will depend on the size of labs you want to do, but more importantly, how powerful your PC is. My PC has 64 gigs of RAM, and I used 32 gigs for my CML VM, but you will have to select how much memory to allocate depending on your system. For this demo, I'll leave it at the default of 8 gigs. Next, click on Processors here. The important thing here is that Virtualize Intel VTX EPT or AMD V RVI is enabled, and it already is, so there's nothing more to do here. Next is hard disk. The default is 32 gigs. For my personal CML lab, I use 64 gigs, but the default of 32 gigs works too. There is some explanation of this in the CML docs. I recommend reading it. Next is the CD DVD disk. This step is very important. First, click on Connect at Power On. Then, down here, click on Use ISO Image File and find the ISO file you downloaded from Cisco. Finally, let's look at the network adapter settings. Probably, you can leave it at the default setting as I have, which is bridged. Basically, the VM will connect to your network via a virtual switch. In the documentation, it explains that you may have to change this, but bridged works for me. 
Okay, now we're done looking at the VM settings. So I'll click on OK. Now we are ready to go. I will power on the VM and we'll move on to the initial setup of CML. Okay, after a bit of loading, you'll arrive at this screen. Just hit enter to continue. Here is the end user license agreement. After reading that, use the tab key to switch and hit enter to accept the EULA. Now this screen is just a brief explanation of what we'll be doing in the setup process. I'll just hit enter to continue. And now this screen is an explanation of how to navigate through these setup menus. The most important ones are tab to switch between fields and buttons, spacebar to select items in radio and checklists, and enter to advance to the next screen. All right, I'll hit enter to continue. Now here is a brief explanation saying that since this VM has only one network interface, we can't do a clustered deployment, which is when you deploy multiple servers. That's fine. We are just doing a standalone deployment, so I will hit enter to continue. Now we can select the host name for the CML controller. The default name is fine, so I'll just hit enter. Now we have to define a username and password for the admin used to configure the CML controller. I'll change the username to Jeremy. Use the down arrow to set the password. And then enter the password again to confirm. Now I'll tab and then hit enter again to continue. Now we define the account we'll be using to access the CML web GUI for labs. I will again set the account to Jeremy and enter the password and confirm the password. Then continue to the next page. Now we can configure the IP address for the VM. DHCP is fine, but I personally like to set a static IP address so I can choose what address it will use. I'll use the down arrow to move to static and then hit the space bar to select it. Then hit enter to continue. Now let's specify the IP address. I'll set it to 192.168.1.101. My home network uses the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 subnet. So I'll set the net mask to 255.255.255.0. Then the IPv4 gateway is my home router, 192.168.1.1. For DNS servers, I'll configure Google's DNS server of 8.8.8.8. .8 then I'll configure the domain name of jeremysitlab.com under DNS search, although I think this field might be optional. Okay, now I'll hit tab and then enter to continue. We can confirm the settings here. They all look fine to me, so I'll hit enter to confirm. Now it says reference platform images will be copied from the ISO to the VM disk. I'll hit enter to get it started. Basically, it's going to copy all of the virtual device files, the virtual routers, switches, firewalls, Linux servers, etc., that we can use in CML. This can take some time, so I'll skip forward in the video. When all is done, we will be greeted with this screen. Notice under the CML2 logo, it says access the CML UI from HTTPS 192.168.1.101, the IP address I configured for the CML VM. So to access the VM, let's open up a web browser and in the address bar, type in the IP address, 192.168.1.101. Now I'm greeted with a warning message. That's because my CML VM doesn't have a valid certificate for HTTPS, but that's fine. Just click on advanced and then continue. Now we're at the login screen for CML. I'll just enter the username and password I configured earlier. And we're in. In the next video, we'll spend some time looking at different features of CML. But before wrapping up this video, there is one more important step. 
licensing. We have to activate our CML license before actually doing labs. So, in the top right here, click on the Tools menu, then click on Licensing. We are brought to the licensing screen. Notice the registration status is unregistered, so we have to register our license. At the top, it says before you start, you need to choose the product configuration. Click on that and select the license you paid for. Personal license with 20 nodes in my case. And probably this is the one you should pick too. Then click on save. Now the screen has changed a bit. So we can click on register here. And now we just need to enter in the product instance registration token. To get that token, go back to the My Account page on the Cisco Learning Network store that we looked at before. Earlier, we clicked on Download. Now let's click on View Licenses. This is the registration token we need to register our CML VM. So you should copy your registration token by clicking here. Return back to CML and then paste it in here and then click on Register. Now, I'm not going to do that because I already have a registered instance of CML. So I'll just click on Cancel. Now let me cut the video here, and I will switch to my already registered CML instance, so we can see what this page looks like when everything is registered. So, here is what it should look like after you have registered your token. Note that your CML VM needs internet access in order to do this. It needs to communicate with Cisco servers to authenticate. Typically, you don't need to do any special configurations for this. This VM is like any other host on my home network and can reach the internet via my home router. If you're having issues registering your VM though, that could be the cause of the problem. Okay, so that's the basic process of installing and setting up CML. Once all of this is done, you're finally ready to start labbing. Let me repeat, if you have any installation issues, your best resource is the installation guide. Feel free to ask me too, but I probably won't be able to solve any issues specific to your particular situation. If you have problems though, chances are someone else has had the same problem before too, so a Google search might help you there. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to actually use CML. That's all for this video. Before finishing this video, let me thank my JCMP level channel members. To become a member, please click the join button under the video. Thanks to Jonathan Makara, Boson Software, Velva Jacob, George Streeter, Funny Dart, Nasir Chowdhury, Gustavo Biar, Gerard Baker, Marcel Lord, Pavel M, Mr. Erlison, Dragos Hirnea, Mayor Salmon, Mason Anderson, Vitaus194, Gina Lindley, Nehemia, Bold1C1U, Mark Jackson, Michael Carroll, Gerald Guiam, Gabriel Braga, Renan Marias, Hector Hernandez, Ali Polat, Maratuba, R. Nelson, Roji Kuriakos, Roscaroy Gamer YT, Owad Arpad Konives, Five Feet, Daniel Brown, Emiliano Correa, Leonardo Souza, Tricky Mickey 123456, Scott Thompson, Jose Alvarez, Kevin Hayes, E.S., William Rosario, and Hussein Yavuz. Sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly, but thank you so much for your support. Thanks to you and my other supporters, I am able to make these videos and release them for free on YouTube, so I really appreciate the support. Another great way to support the channel is to like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this video with others. So, if this video was helpful, I'd appreciate it if you did any of those. Thanks for watching.